Community Consultation Techniques, Bauer Studio, Kalkaringi 2020. Consultation is a two-way exchange of information between the design team and Aboriginal peoples. It is essential in creating successful reciprocal partnerships, which develop much needed facilities and programs. Historically, Aboriginal people have had negligible control over their lives and community because of non-existent or tokenistic consultations. This has led to widespread cynicism and distrust, which can be overcome by effective consultation across all stages of the design process. This is crucial in empowering Aboriginal peoples to have input, thus facilitating self-determination. Approaches are framed into two categories, top-down and bottom-up. Top-down methods stem from government and Indigenous organisation policies, whilst bottom-up methods develop from the best practices of people working directly with communities. Consultation is essential for understanding location-specific considerations that only local Aboriginal people know, hearing the community's specific needs, understanding and developing shared goals, and ensuring the ongoing success of the project. Past consultations have failed due to operating on uninformed assumptions, limited consultation, not making allowances, uninformed promises, and lacking cultural competency. Best practice is a set of guidelines, ethics, or ideas that represent the most efficient or effective course of action in a given situation. It is reflective of current and past practices and could be more appropriately termed better practice, given that there are still unresolved aspects, such as how to engage with communities in conflict or sorry business, with fractured governance, weak leadership, or that are extremely remote. We need to target existing structures and resources to really get the best out of community engagement. Now, one of the things that happens is that Indigenous staff in an organisation are often practising community engagement every day. So we need to harness their ideas and find out what it is they're doing and get excited about what they're doing and try to build on those sorts of things. The following cross-cultural consultation best practice techniques have been compiled from various successful precedents in which cultural competency is at the forefront. Other identified principles are participation in decision making, building relationships, effective communication and with whom to consult. Cultural competency moves beyond simply understanding that cultures are different and requires one to demonstrate their ability to effectively interact cross-culturally. Cultural competency considerations that can impact the effectivity of consultations can include gendered knowledge restrictions, disproportionate gender interactions, avoidance relationships, eye contact, light handshakes, face-to-face -face interaction, shared responsibility, and respectful silence. Aboriginal participation in decision-making is maximised by having respectful, culturally competent staff transparency, openness and opportunities for input. Defining how and why people are involved and encouraging high levels of control has the capacity to engender a sense of ownership. A pertinent example of consultation is the work of Tungurup Council Architects who established a participatory approach where Aboriginal residents were encouraged to sketch or model designs for their houses. Strong relationships based on trust and comfortability are key to ensuring people are actively engaged in the process. Taking time to develop genuine and equal relationships with community members is fundamental to meaningful consultations that aren't tokenistic. Effective relationships should facilitate independence through mutual responsibility and decision making. Reciprocity involves helping Aboriginal people to take their own action. An example of reciprocity is when, in early negotiations, David asks Double R, what are you going to do for us? Developing relationships requires recognising and respecting one another's expectations, cultures and communication methods. Time must be invested in relationships and consultations to achieve consensus in the community. Additional time should be allowed for decision making and consultation delays due to cultural business. If people are consulted early, aware of the process, treated respectfully, things usually go very smoothly and it also just creates a more trusting and respectful relationship. Ensuring that everyone can understand each other and the shared goals and concerns is fundamental to consultation. 
If the language is unclear, enlist an interpreter. Physical models and visual material effectively bridge language boundaries. Once you put, it, put down like a, uh, a poster or pictures or things that people can see or like relate to or have seen, that just really gets the focus in. Verbal or written communication should be expressed concisely and simply to avoid misunderstandings. Body language is very powerful, so understand how you are representing yourself. Give people time to speak and don't cut anyone off. Ensure that everyone has the same information so that discussions are purposeful. Much information can be gathered through observation and off-duty conversations. It is important to consider whom to talk to in a community consultation, as information can be restricted between genders, ages and family groups. Discussion must take place with a cross-section of people, which requires giving early and repeated notice. Community elders will often not share their opinions until they have heard others' opinions, and their silence may reflect that they do not like an idea or that they think their views may not be accepted. A mix of both formal and informal off-the-clock consultations can be very effective. Discussions at the Wangarat Club in Kalkarini, for instance, are more casual, less politically charged, and allow more time for answers. It is also a less threatening environment in which people may feel more comfortable voicing their opinions. Here is a brief summary of a best practice approach for use in meetings adapted from the Central Land Council. It includes risk assessment pre-meeting, encourage attendance, introductions, state the agenda, establish a chair or meeting leader, discuss terms of the meeting, discussion points in order, summary of meeting and actions, next steps, any other business, close the meeting, and feedback. A consultation can only be determined to be successful by talking, demonstrating, reporting, and reviewing with members of the community to identify if the consultation has led to effective, timely action and sustainable outcomes. It is also essential that Indigenous participation continues throughout the development of the projects and the evaluation of outcomes. Each community and project is unique and comes with its own challenges that need to be evaluated and approached under the specific conditions. The best practice techniques should be understood and applied as identified for the context. Strong relationships with communities and effective consultation processes can produce admirable and beneficial outcomes 